Hi, I'm Junior Banza. I grew up in Kinshasa singing songs like this with my family every night. Our new film series entitled Not By Bread Alone includes the story of how my family joined the church in Switzerland. But my family's conversion story has a lot in common with those of others in the DR Congo and French-speaking Africa. This is why we named the film series Not By Bread Alone. Of course, this phrase comes from Jesus when he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. These are words that speak to the heart of African Christians. When poverty deprives, disease sickens, war menaces and human predators victimize for the sake of wealth and power, hundreds of millions of steadfast and resilient Christians in Africa are sustained in their trials by their faith in Christ as they work for a better future. Congolese saints are not reticent in sharing their faith and their gratitude. The more you get to know them, the more you will see that the kind of peace they find in Christ is not best expressed as a contemplative solo, a small trickle of feeling from a single individual, but rather in Congolese fashion as a soaring group of voices boldly singing in a chorus of joyful, loving praise, a thundering waterfall of power and emotion. What is special about the DR Congo? First, it is located in the very heart of Central Africa. The DR Congo is vast, the second largest country in Africa, about the size of the eastern United States. It features lush rainforest and unique wildlife, such as the mountain gorilla, the okapi, the super smart bonobo, and very large insects. The country is bordered by the Congo River, the deepest and most powerful river in the world. The country is blessed with beautiful, intelligent, and enthusiastic children. But for Latter-day Saints, the Dura Congo is special for another reason. It is one of the fastest growing areas of the church. The historic boundaries of French-speaking Africa cover a surprisingly large and populous portion of the entire continent. In fact, the church is growing so quickly in these countries that some people think French might eventually become the most common language in the church. The Dura Congo already has the second largest church membership in Africa and the rate of growth and retention is phenomenal, even when compared with other African countries. The geography of church growth is also a fascinating subject. Over the last decade, its membership has spread out from five centers of strength to dozens of faraway locations whose number continues to increase quickly. Many of these outposts of faith are in incredibly remote places, places like Likasi, where, as a missionary, I used to meet on Sundays in this small room with a handful of members. Likasi now has multiple stakes. Luputa, a small village, where the first stake was formed before any full-time missionary had ever served there. There are currently 112 full-time missionaries serving from Luputa's two stakes. The Bateke Plateau, where church members have traveled to gather family history from tribal leaders. Kisangani, the home of the fearless Wagenya fishermen, 
In just a few years, the church in Kisangani expanded from a single branch to a district with six branches. But not by bread alone is not a lesson in geography or statistics. Instead, it tells the stories of faithful members like these who have joyfully embraced the gospel, sometimes at great personal cost. For example, the episodes present stories of bright and dedicated missionaries, elders, and sisters, whose devotion becomes clear when we begin to learn their backstories. This is Cedric Chiamwe, who worked selling bananas, traveling from town to town on his bicycle to earn $250 needed for his missionary passport. It took him four years. And this is Mathieu Kalume Abilwa. His family received the testimony of the restored gospel in the 1970s, along with hundreds of other nearby saints. But the villages where they lived were so remote that missionaries could not go there. Wondering what had happened to these saints, two recently returned missionaries braved a long and risky journey to find out if these groups of converts still existed. After many difficulties, they learned that these unbaptized converts were still true to their testimonies and had continued to hold Sunday school and study the Book of Mormon in their villages for nearly 50 years, almost completely on their own. Matthew's mother pleaded with the two young men to find a way for their 12 children to be baptized, but they were not authorized to do so. Finally, at the age of 25, Matthew convinced his father and mother to let him travel alone to the city of Lubumbashi, 600 kilometers away, where he could be taught, baptized, receive the priesthood, and be called to serve a full-time mission. Movingly, he tells of how sweet it was to be able to take the sacrament for the very first time in his life. In one episode, Elder Willie Binene Sabwe, now in Area 70, tells the story of the life-threatening journey from ethnic persecution he made with his family and thousands of others. His young life was a string of disappointments. Then, everything took a major turn for the better when he met Lily, whom the Lord had shown him in a dream. Together, they raised a family, built a school, and with the help of the church, mobilized the entire village day in and day out for a period of three years to dig an 18-mile trench by hand through the forest to bring clean water to their families. Another episode illustrates what we like to call the ripple effect of generosity. People in need being helped and then going on to help other people. For example, David and Josephine Mwinza lived with their boys in a one-room home of a few square meters on a noisy street in Kinshasa. They had no electricity or plumbing. In the middle of the room was a pedal-powered sewing machine where David earned a living as a tailor. He is completely blind in both eyes. His wife has a handicap. After joining the church, David and Josephine dreamed of starting a school where disabled people could learn to sew and earn a living. Through the help of kind friends, that dream became a reality. Here, David, who has never seen a school or the student with his own eyes, deftly teaches his class how to measure, cut, and sew. After years of preparation, David and Josephine Mwinza were sealed in the Kinshasa Temple. Since 2019, five temples have been dedicated or announced for the two Congos. The temple is an oasis of peace to families, to the young and the old, to jovial logistics experts, hardy construction workers, dedicated gardeners, and diligent guilders. The time has come to tell the full story of the saints, 
Now, in this special moment, while new temples rise to witness the faithfulness of these spiritually sensitive people, our film series will remind the rising generation worldwide that the core of the bright, beating heart of Africa, the source of light and life and love of its people is not the daily bread, but rather the true word of God, now restored in its fullness to the earth.